Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, if you're enjoying the knowledge nuggets I'm dropping here and just digging with them, screaming, make sure that you uh, hit that like button and subscribe and make sure you spread the word to all your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Non-alcoholic alternatives have been a small but growing segment of the beverage industry. This is due to a number of factors. So first, there are people trying to be healthier and wanting an alternative to booze. Uh, depending on the beverage, an NA version isn't always healthier though, or isn't healthier when it comes to calories, sugars, and carbs. Alcohol itself isn't necessarily healthy on its own. Low carb, low calorie, seltzers with super fruit additives, etc., also have alcohol, and its effect on the body when drank to excess, especially often, is detrimental to our own body. The liver is the most commonly thought of organ, but it also affects the circulatory system in the brain, among other, thing, among other things. Let's be clear, I'm no saint when it comes to imbibing. I'm just making sure we're all on the same page here. Some any beverages will have higher amounts of sugar and therefore carbs in order to make them taste better. Also, many NA beverages actually contain small amounts of alcohol. In the US and in many other countries, an NA beverage must be 0.5% or lower alcohol by volume. An alcohol-free product is 0.0%. A 0.5% ABV is basically negligible, but it's worth pointing out that it still contains alcohol and it's subject to the same laws as regular alcoholic beverages in most places. There may be an exception somewhere, but I'm really not aware of any here in the US. Side note, when it comes to things like most bitters, which have a high ABV like say, Angostura, which is 44.7, they are considered food grade and are exempt from many type of liquor licenses. A second reason for having a true any alternative is for someone that medically can't have alcohol or needs to restrict uh, their consumption of it. It could be like an illness like diabetes or some other illness. They may be getting regular treatments like chemo or maybe they've recently had a surgery. An occasional drink might be okay, but Normally, you're told to abstain until it's considered safe to drink again. So to kind of talk about diabetes, alcohol itself isn't necessarily bad, but it does mess with how the body regulates sugar. Plus, since you have a lower inhibition, you might decide to indulge in some more sugary products. So this is really why for diabetes, for diabetics, alcohol, while you can have it, it's, you need to really restrict it. You have to be very careful with it. So also you might be pregnant. You might be the designated driver, whether going out to a bar or restaurant, or maybe you went to a party. You can still feel like you're part of the party, but staying sober so others can get home safely. Same if you're pregnant, you wanna feel like part of the party. You might be detoxing or something like that, or you might be doing one of those no drink January type things. There's also a growing temperance movement, not just here in the U.S., but also around the world. Maybe you're not a full-fledged member of the temperance movement, but you just want to have an alternative on a regular or occasional basis. Maybe the person is an alcoholic, but still wants to have the flavors. I'd say this is kind of dangerous path as, I don't know, maybe it could lead to that person deciding to go back to drinking alcohol. I would never actually suggest it to somebody who I know is an alcoholic to do, but it's their decision. Religion, I'd say this is kind of the same thing as someone who's an alcoholic, so I personally also would not recommend this unless there's some kind of specific event uh, and it's not really being done regularly. So as you can see, there are actually quite a few reasons that someone might want to have something like this. Many of them are just personal. So with the holidays in full swing right now and alcohol consumption already at a high level due to the pandemic, what if I did an episode like this? So I did a rare thing. I actually emailed a few companies that make these things for free samples. Two companies replied, yes, and sent samples. That would be these. One company said, yes, but I have yet to receive a sample. I got an email from them on November 4th saying they were sending that sample, nowhere to be found. A fourth company gave me a coupon 
not to be ungrateful, but I've never had that one happen exactly. To be fair, I've gotten discounts on other things like conferences, tastings, tours, etc. But not just a straight up like purchase something for review. So let's get into these two companies that were kind enough to send me samples. I'll start with DOS. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Kind of like the Spanish word for two, right? But I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, it's made by the Ransom Distillery in Sheridan, Oregon. Now they've been around for actually 25 years. Besides the gin, they also make a triple sec slash Cointreau slash Grammonier alternative called Orange. And what I'm guessing is an Aperol or Campari alternative called Bittersweet. I'll quote directly from their website on how they make the products overall and then how gin free is actually made. All right, so quote, we use the approach of mixing ingredients to produce dose, not the removal of alcohol method. Tapping into our extensive experience of blending wines and spirits, we understand the importance of each component that goes into the final product. Starting with the ingredients, each recipe is handcrafted in small lots to ensure quality and consistency. Production is done by our team at the distillery and each batch receives the same attention that goes into crafting and blending our whiskey and barrel aged gin. Mixing is a three step process and at each stage, we make sure the batch is meeting our quality standards. Finished product is subject to aging and microbial stability, stability testing. Our products are unfiltered to ensure that the maximum flavor and aroma comes through in the finished product. All right, then they say ingredients. We source organic ingredients along with the highest quality natural flavors for all of our dose non-alcoholic spirits. And then as far as production, each batch is extremely small batch and handcrafted and is bottled right after blending to ensure maximum quality and freshness. All right, so that's how they do all that. Now, they also say that gin free is produced with steam distilled pure juniper berry oil combined with other natural flavors of orange and grapefruit, which are cold pressed to retain complex flavors and intense aromas. Gin free is made with all natural flavors and is lab tested uh, and certified pesticide free. And they actually have something of that on the label. All right, so what are the stats on gin free? So unlike most wines, this product is not regulated by the TTB, but it's actually regulated by the FDA. As such, it comes with a nutritional facts label. This also holds true for any alcoholic beverage under 7% ABV. First, it retails on their site for $24.99. That should be pretty much what you'll pay at a retailer. And the gin free is zero across the board. So that's calories, sugar, carbs, etc. The other two have between 11 and 14 grams of carbs. And most of that comes from a sugar alcohol called erythritol. Erythritol is a naturally occurring sugar that has no effect on sugar levels in the bloodstream and is actually considered safer for, for diabetics. The caloric measurement for the other two is four to five calories per serving. They don't have a storage shelf life after opening on the label or the website from what I can find. All right, so similar to my Thanksgiving special, I'll continue on to the products from Liars and then review all of them. All right, so Liars was founded by two Australians in an independent British company uh, in 2019. The website lists an Australian company on the contact page. Zero Proof Australia PTY LTD. For those of you non-Aussies, the PTY LTD means proprietary limited, a term that means a limited number of shareholders own the shares in the company. In addition, the company cannot offer its shares to the general public. I didn't know this either. However, their headquarters are actually in London with offices in Australia, California, New York, and Shanghai. Now, from what I can tell, this is the only product they make, unlike Dose, which is part of a, an actual distillery. From the FAQ page, I have a few things to tell you about. So first, they get their name from the Australian Lyrebird. According to the website, it is the world's greatest mimic. Their mascot is named Horatio. Now, each of the labels has a different animal on it. Their production methods appear to be the same as what Dose uses, but because they're using that sugar alcohol, you will get trace amounts of alcohol, which I'll, I'll tell you that in a second anyway. Um, it's also made in Leicestershire, United Kingdom, Melbourne, Australia, and Montreal, Canada. Now they make 13 different NA spirits at the time of this recording. Sugars range from 0.6 grams to 6 grams per 
30 milliliter serving, which is basically like one ounce, like when you're making a cocktail, or two grams to 20 grams for 100 milliliter serving. Now calories range from 15 to 80 per 100 milliliter serving. Now, as far as the ABV, they are not alcohol free, but NA. So all their products contain 0.5% ABV or less with the range being 0.2 to 0.3%. They mentioned that beverages like orange juice, kombucha can also contain, also contain trace amounts of alcohol in addition to some bread and ripe fruit, which I knew about the ripe fruit. This is actually all true. Now, according to them, their shelf life is 12 weeks after opening. Now they don't say you need to refrigerate it, but on their website, they actually recommend that you do it and make sure you use the original cap. They are free from known allergens. They are vegan and 100% natural. Now the dose, they do say that it is made in a facility that also processes milk, almonds, coconut, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, egg, and wheat. So they can't necessarily say it's free from known allergens because it is made in a facility that has it. So you could, you could get cross-contamination. All right, so which ones do I have from them? All right, so uh, I got the bottle shots coming here. So we have the American malt, the Italian orange, and the uh, aperitif rosso. So we have the equivalent of an American malt whiskey, a Campari, and a sweet vermouth. Now you can probably guess what we're gonna make with these. If you don't, well, we'll get to it in a second. All right, let's get into everything. First, we're gonna taste the spirits on their own. Now, side note on this, whenever I go to the cocktail conference here in San Antonio, I always ask to taste the base spirit first and then the cocktail. I see this because the, really the rest of the ingredients for me mask a lot of the base spirits flavors and aromas. So at least that is for me. I know that one of the companies, I don't remember which one, mentioned not to drink their straight. And I'm sure that's a valid thing is these are really approximations of the real thing. Um, and none of them actually say anything about like just drinking them straight or necessarily on the rocks, though you technically could because they are a substitute. They're really meant to be mixed with other things. Anyway, let's taste them on their own. All right, so I'm gonna do the dose. Now I've actually tasted their orange and their, um, with the vermouth. The other, I've tasted the other two. I haven't tasted this one yet. And they taste what how they're supposed to taste. Now I've got, oh, you can really smell it. It's super highly aromatic. So I've got my Sam Adams Utopias glasses because if you're gonna sample something, it should be in something like this. Side note on, Utopias, it's made every other year. I can't remember if this is the year it will be made or I can't remember if it's the odd years or the even years. I seem to think it's odd years because I would have had this in, if I had this in 18, I would have had it in 18. Um, I mean, I probably had it in 17. I don't think I had it in 16. So I think it's in the odd years. So, um, I mean, it smells like a gin. I mean, legitimately smells like a gin. You got the juniper, you've got, so someone I know said there was like a pine type of uh, taste and aroma to it. I can see that. I can totally see that. It's not kind of like, a, it might be bad to say this, but it's kind of like a pine saw. And it's not in a, not a bad way. I mean, not a bad thing. But it also smells like kind of an air freshener. Like you've got all those like, not piney, but like all those other like orange and that type of stuff in here. All right, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna check it out here. So on its own, it's kind of it it, it needs to be mixed with something else. Okay, so it it mean it's 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 not bad. Like if you just wanted to put this on the rocks, you you could. Um, but there is, there is this kind of quality to it that's, it's still a gin flavor, but it's not quite the same. It's pretty darn close though. So I think in a cocktail, it would, it would totally be a good substitute. All right, we'll put that one off to the side. All right, so I'll just leave that open. It's, it, it, it's kind of cool tasting, honestly. All right, so the American malt, I think this is a regular screw cap. 
Yeah. All right. All right. Let's check this one out. So you have that kind of like caramelization that's kind of going on here. Um, it's also a bit of like coffee. You know how I like coffee? Not. There's a bit of maltiness to it. Let's check it out. There's been a molasses to this. That malt is coming through. Kind of like a malt, not quite a malted, like malted uh, chalk or whatever. There's a bit of orange to it. There's a bit of, um, it's like a bitter component to it. Like, um, oh, I can't think of it right now. But having these two so far, I see why they don't, they say don't really drink these straight. Because there's no alcohol, really. I mean, okay, there's a trace amount. There's really no alcohol. So you don't have like that bite. You don't have that thing that kind of like really gives you that mouthfeel. It is really watery. It's, it's like thin. Because the alcohol is what's going to give you that broader mouthfeel. Especially when we're talking like 40% ABV. I mean, it's got the flavors. It's got the flavors it's supposed to have. All right. Um, we're going to do... I'm going to do the, the, the Campari thing first or next. All right. So the Italian orange. So you can think of this as Campari. You could also think of it as... Um, oh, yeah. It was, you know, or, uh, maybe Aperol. But I think they're really going for Campari on this more than anything else. So obviously there's orange on it. There's a bit of a um, kind of bitter quality. Kind of like the orange peel. It actually kind of smells like it has alcohol. Like, like it really does. There's a bit of... Um, woods woodsy character kind of pine character almost juniper there's a spice component to it let's check it out yeah actually it's bitter actually this tastes really good like i could see you just sipping on this so this is something where if you were doing like a campari campari and soda you could do this in a soda. Now, all these, they say you could like just do like the the base and like a soda a tonic, which we're going to get to here with the with the gin. Yeah, actually, it tastes, this one tastes the best of all of them so far. Again, it's it's thin, it's watery, but like you're not going to mistake it for like if you know what the alcohol one should be like, you're like you're not going to be like, oh, there's alcohol. You, you know, there's no alcohol in it, which is fine. That's the point. All right, so this is effectively a sweet vermouth. Yeah, it smells like a vermouth for sure. It's got that bark type of quality. Some uh, red red fruit. It 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 tastes like tastes like a it's like a, a sweet vermouth. This is a touch of sweetness to it. All right, so the first drink I'm going to do is just a basic gin and tonic. Now, I'm using Q Indian tonic, but you know you can use whatever one you want. Whatever your favorite tonic is, you can use that. So I'm going to use 1.5 ounces of the gin-free and approximately three ounces of tonic. I'm really just going to eyeball it, and we're going to build this in the glass. All right. So... First, since it's being built in the glass, we're going to get my ice. I'm really mad because I can't find my actual, like, ice scoop. So, I'm going to use this. So, with a cocktail like this, you really need to make sure the ice is packed. Anytime you're going to pour over ice, 
uh, you want to make sure the ice is, is packed with ice, okay? I don't remember having the fancy ice bucket during uh, Life with Mark. All right, so we're going to do one and a half, one and a half ounces because that's your typical like mixed drink um, measurement for the base spirit. Like I said, it's built in the glass, a little spillage there. No, <laughs> that's later. I'm throw a tonic in there. Now, I didn't get any lime. I forgot to get some lime. I don't think that's really three ounces. It's probably more like one and a half ounces. I'm like a one to one ratio on that. I mean, I don't drink a lot of gin and tonics because in general, there's a lot of gins. I, I mean, I'm getting better with gin. I mean, it tastes like a gin and tonic. It's heavy on the juniper and that pine, that pine type of thing. But when you mix it with the tonic, it's, it tastes really good. That, that's actually pretty good stuff right there. All right, next, we're going to do a non-alcoholic Negroni. So that means I'm going to combine products from both companies. So we're going to use the Dos Gin Free with the Liars uh, Peritif Rosso and the Italian Orange. So this is going to be equal parts of all three, one ounce each. I mean, garnish with the orange peel. We're going to combine all the ingredients first, or probably in there, and then pour over ice. All right, we don't need this. So let's get our jigger here. We got the one ounce on this side. Pour into the mixing glass here. Got all fancy. And then the orange. Doesn't matter what order, you just combine all three. Okay, and this, I don't think either, either one of these companies knew I was going to combine their, their stuff, but I mean, why not, man? I'm sure Dose would have wanted me to use their three because you can make a Negroni from theirs, but I only got the one from them, which is totally fine because that's all I requested. All right, so that drink is over there. Let's get some more. Let's get a new glass, fresh ice. Again, we're going to pack it with the ice. And one of the reasons you do that is just so that when you're just gonna like free pour, say like the tonic, you're you're basically pouring the proper proportion. You, of course, the, the, the size of the glass needs to be right. All right, and then, uh, so yeah, we're just gonna pour over ice, so I don't need my Hawthorne strain or anything like that. As I spill a little bit. And then we're gonna get the orange. It's always important to make sure you don't have the sticker on the orange, and that you also rinse it, wash it. I know my bartender friends are either feeling my pain or laughing at my stupidity. That hurt. You didn't see the actual cut as I stopped right before then, but you can tell I don't really peel a lot of anything. So, since I need three orange peels, I'm going to peel some more but I'm going to do it so I don't cut myself. I know there's a better way to do this, but anyway, I've got my orange peels. Put them over here. Yeah, that-ish hurt. Okay, so I dumped out the drink. I didn't even try it. So that because it was getting watered down. It it was a it's been a good half hour. 
maybe not quite that long. All right, so again, one ounce each. Good Lord, that thing hurt. And it bled, not, not to gross you out, but it, it bled for a while. Like it took a while for it to stop. It was under the nail. All right. When I get done with this, I'm probably gonna take a couple shots of whiskey or tequila or something. Fun fact, I'm allergic to aspirin, so normal pain relievers really don't work on me. And I don't really stock Tylenol at home because Tylenol is really, uh, it really is meant to um, handle fever, not pain, even though it's prescribed for pain. You got to have the real stuff with the, the Tylenol 3 with the codeine for it to be any, to worth, be worth anything. All righty. Pack the ice. Boom. Pour this over the ice. Okay, so you're gonna take your orange peel. A lot of times you'll you'll put it on the on the glass, and then you also want to like twist it. You're trying to uh, you're trying to get the esters out. As far as Negronis go, this actually tastes pretty good. The bitter comes up a little bit later, but um, I could see drinking this and I hate Negronis, okay? For the record, I think Negronis are an overrated cocktail that Psalms just get all just excited about for no reason at all, for no good reason. But this is tasty. That's tasty, actually. Um, so when it comes to Negronis, the only time I've ever had Negroni I really liked is because it was made by, it was batch made. So it'd been, had hours, not like a day to like really integrate. So yeah, exactly. Next, I'm going to do a Negroni variant called the Boulevardier. So all you do is you substitute the whiskey for the gin. So it's going to be all liars. So we're going to use the American malt along with the Italian orange and the aperitif rosso. Same exact proportions in build. Dun, dun, dun. So again, Boulevardiers aren't my favorite drinks, but since I like that Negroni a lot, maybe I'll like this one. Cause you know what it is like with, with, with Boulevardiers, the, the whiskey tends to be kind of overpowering a lot of times. Uh, and then you add the Campari in there and that extra, you know, that extra, you know, bittering component. Even though you're using sweet vermouth, vermouth still has a bitterness. So it's, it's, it's just kind of bitter AF. That's why, that's why Psalms love Negronis because it's all that bitterness. And the joke is after you drink wine all day or taste wine all day, you want something bitter to kind of cleanse your palate. So you're either drinking like a, like an IPA, like a high bitter IPA, or you're drinking Negronis. At text some. Once, once all the seminars are done, the poor bartenders, they get, they get crushed with like 500 psalms between the, going to the two bars asking for 499 Negronis on the one psalm that gets the Strega. That's why they have to batch make it. It's kind of funny when you have the inexperienced bartenders and it's like day one or like the pre-conference and they don't know because the, the regular bartenders aren't there, which actually the two main regular bartenders I've known for like almost 10 years, they're both gone. Um, so anyway, yeah, the inexperienced bartenders didn't know to batch make it. So yeah, it's kind of funny to see that. And that's really not, but anyway. All right, so Boulevardier and... Uh, Oh, wow. 
So the 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 malt whiskey, the the American malt, adds this, you know, definitely a different character to it. It's there's still the or get the orange flavor from the Italian orange, and of course you get the orange and all that there. Um, you're getting that maltiness, kind of like that caramel, caramelized, almost coffee, like um, um, coffee liqueur. Type, not quite coffee liqueur. They do make a coffee liqueur, by the way, um, but kind of like that roasted coffee, caramel, uh, butterscotch, butterscotch. Guys, you're, you're you're killing it on these things. Even the gin tonic actually tasted good. All right, so <laughs> the last I'm gonna do is an old fashioned. Now, if you remember my Life with Mark episode, I made one of these. Um, now, this is gonna be the Liars American Malt and just Angostura bitters. Um, and then it's gonna be two ounces of the American Malt. And then I'm gonna build it in the shaker tin or yeah, build in the shaker tin uh, with the bitters. And then you'll shake it and then you'll, uh, also add sugar. Now, normally you just add a sugar cube and then just enough water to dissolve it when you muddle, but I'm cheating. I'm going to use the granulated sugar like I did last time. All right. So we'll pour, uh, pour into the glass, fresh ice and garnish with an orange peel. Again, sometimes you add a cherry, um, and that's technically only used in Manhattan. I kind of explained this in life with Mark. So go back to see that. All righty. All right, I just had to make sure I'm doing this the proper way because I'm, as you can tell, really not that much of a bartender. All right, so we've got our two ounces. I'm gonna do the double on this. Oh, first of all, well, yeah, we're gonna do this first. So one. And then two. And then do our Two dashes of Angostura. Hopefully the, um, I'm gonna make sure that the little plastic thing doesn't fly off like it did last time. And then I'm going to take a bar spoon and spoon some sugar into here. Just one bar spoon worth. That should be basically the equivalent of a sugar cube. Throw some ice in there. <clears throat> now this is to, in a regular drink, you're kind of diluting by doing a shake. Well, you're actually gonna stir it. So you're not gonna dilute it that much, but you're also just kind of getting it cold and let's, Throw some ice into here. And we're stirring instead of shaking, as far as I know, because we are having sugar in there. You also, you also don't shake when you have uh, juices. It is a stir or a build, if I remember correctly. So I'll take our bar spoon, spin in here. You could you could do it all in here. I think for life of the mark, I did it in there. All right, we should be all good to go with that. We'll take our Hawthorne strainer and strain into here. All right. And then take our orange peel that I so expertly peeled. We'll get the oils, kind of do that on the edge, drop that in there. Let's check it out. As far as old fashioned goes, it, it tastes pretty good. I mean, you really, it really the American malts was coming through a lot. Maybe I should have added like another dash of bitters to get that little bit of flavoring. Um, so just kind of to talk about the bitters, I'm using real bitters. And like I said, this is considered food grade, even though it's 44.7% uh, alcohol. 
Um, actually, I thought this, I thought it was actually a different percentage, but it's 40, 44.7% alcohol. Um, you can buy aromatic bitters that is non-alcoholic. Um, but I wasn't going to spend 20 bucks on that for just this one drink that I'm, I'm not going to use again. Right. It tastes good. Really tastes good. Like I could totally enjoy that. All right, so a variation of the Negroni is called an Old Pal. So rye and dry, as you remember, by. So rye whiskey and dry vermouth instead of like regular whiskey or, yeah, instead of regular whiskey uh, and sweet vermouth. Th those are the changes. Now I bring this up because there's really no reason not to combine these with real alcohol, the regular alcohol. So you could have a lower calorie cocktail by doing this. So you could take rye whiskey, add your Campari, I'm sorry, add your, add your uh, dry vermouth, and then you've got, um, and then you've got a lower calorie version of it, um, especially when you have like liqueurs, like say like vermouth or uh, Campari or triple sec or stuff like that. They tend to have a higher sugar content. All right, so yeah, so that's today's show. So I hope uh, it was a fun and informative show for you. Hope you got a little laugh at me cutting myself. And again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends about it. Until next time, we'll see you later.